Hey everybody, so this video is about how to run a SWAV file. Um, so SWAV file is part of what we call literate program programming. Uh, and basically the idea is to have the code in LaTeX to write your paper. Uh, and within that code embedded, you have um, the statistical code. So what I have here is a file. Um, it's actually a LaTeX file, uh, but it has an ending uh, called dot R, capital R, N, W. Uh, and I'm going to open this with, uh, I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to open on Emacs, a special type of Emacs called Aquamax. So, um, Basically, if you're familiar with the the you know regular uh, uh, LaTeX, basically that's it. Uh, you know here you have the the code in color. I won't go over this code because you know there are some papers that I'm actually going to point you to later uh, that can help you understand the code. All I'm going to say is that usually for uh, you know the places everything here is primarily LaTeX. But then there are certain sections, for example, here, uh, where uh, you have this, you know, less than, less than, greater than, greater than, and then it ends with a, an at, and everything in between is R code. And this R code, whenever you compile the uh, R and W code, uh, you can actually run this. So anyway, that, that's the, you know, where this file is. Now, I have placed this file inside my, uh, on my desktop. And the way I'm going to run this is, I'm, again, I'm on a Mac. I'm going to uh, call for a terminal. I'm going to get my terminal here. I'm going to CD with, uh, to my desktop. So that, so I did CD desktop. And then I can, uh, and then I did a list. So LS. And I can see all of my files here. Uh, there are actually two ways of uh, uh, running a, a uh, an R in the W or a SWAV file. I'm actually, you know, I could run the, the file from the terminal, but I am actually going to run this from within R. So first I'm going to start R, so I'll type R and then enter. It gives me the the terminal here for R. Now you could do the exact same thing by just you know opening the the GUI, okay? So I could potentially do this from here, um, but that's okay. So I'm I'm gonna do it from here, and then I'm gonna type uh, swave. Uh, so parentheses uh, quotes, and then uh, I am going to look for. Let me just get rid of this. Uh, I'm going to uh, uh, basically type the name of this RN, uh, RNW file. Uh, so I'm just going to do full uh, dot RNW. Let me just expand this. So here we go. And then I do, you know, close parenthesis and enter. Now, once I do this, you know, there's a bunch of uh, uh, graphics that pop out. Uh, but what I really want to look at is the output here. So as you can see, it says writing to full tech, processing the code. Uh, and now it says that I can run LaTeX on full tech. Now, as you remember, prior to getting into the, the R, I actually navigated to the desktop, which means that this the end product of this uh, file here is a file called full tech. Uh, in this file, what should have been deposited on my uh, desktop. Now, if I look at my desktop now, where is that? So here we go. So now I have a file here called foo.tech. Okay. So I'm going to go back to my terminal. And now, rather than you know being inside the R, I'm going to open a new tab. So now I'm back to a, a regular terminal. I'm going to navigate again to my desktop. I'm going to list. And uh, as you can see, here's my file. Okay. Now, what I need to do now, I, I have two ways of doing this. 
I could uh, uh, do it the way, uh, uh, you know, through the terminal. And, uh, you know, I could just say LaTeX. And then, because I'm already on the desktop, I can just say foo and then dot tech. Uh, and this will make the conversion to a DVI file. So basically, this is the way to do this. So LaTeX, uh, full tech. So it gives me a lot of uh, blah, blah, blah. But then in the end, it tells me that if I do a list here, I should find a DVI file. Okay. Now, the DVI file is already a, a precursor of the, the, the PDF file. Um, and now, uh, there are actually two ways of actually looking at this DVI. So, one of the things I can do is to run another command called uh, DVI uh, PDF and then just write full DVI here. And uh, if I list again, I can see that I have now a full PDF file. If I come over here and I look for the full PDF file and I double click, uh, you will see that you know that initial uh, uh, SWAY file actually got converted to a PDF file. And what's interesting about this is that every single command that you had inside the SWAY file actually was processed. So in that initial file, you know, you can go back there and I'm going to post these files. You can look at, so for example, you only had the command 2 plus 2, but it has been processed to 4. Uh, you know, in the same way, uh, you know, there was a command for a plot here. Uh, and it not only generated the plot, but it actually inserted the plot uh, inside the, 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 the PDF file. Now, because I'm on a, uh, on a Mac and I have installed another file, uh, a software that I'm going to show you in a second, uh, you know, another option for me is to double click on foo.dvi. And in my computer, it's going to automatically open a software called TechShop. Now, I can't remember whether this thing is free or not, uh, but TechShop, it basically, at the same time, opens the DVI file and automatically creates a, a, a foo.pdf. So even if I had not used the command uh, DVI PDF to convert the DVI file, uh, you know, through tech shop, um, my file would have been converted. So it's very easy. Swave has a lot of advantages. Uh, every time you change your data set, your paper changes automatically. Uh, it's just that, you know, you have to write the, the paper in LaTeX which a lot of people, probably including me, uh, you know, I think it's an advantage because it's an outstanding uh, uh, typesetting uh, system. Bye.